Jerry Callahan and Kirk Minahan. Welcome back, my friends. It's hour number two on day number two of the 15th annual WEINS and Jimmy Fun Radio Telethon presented by our great friends at the Arbella Insurance Foundation. You can call 877-738-1234 or you can text, and this is really easy, K Cancer to 20222 to easily donate $25. As we uh, begin hour number two, we're very pleased to welcome uh, offensive lineman for the New England Patriots, Nate Solder, his lovely wife, Lexi, and the star of the show, one-year-old Hudson. Welcome, Solder family. How are you? Great. great that is one. Here. That is one good-looking boy right there. Yeah, I, he's an he, awesome he, kid. he takes after his mom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he absolutely. Takes after his mom. <laughs> Thank uh, goodness. Your, I'm not the your, your life changed dramatically in in October 2015. Uh, I'm sure there were things that you were worried about. It's just a you know general mom and all that things that you were worried about professionally, Nate. But it all sort of took a back seat in October of 2015. Tell us about that day. Yep. So um, it was October 19th. <laughs> And uh, we'll backtrack a little bit the week before. Um, we were giving Hudson a bath, mm-hmm. as usual. We do every night, tubby time. And he, Nate, actually felt a lump on his left side, mm-hmm. you know, when we were washing him. And we said, oh, that's weird. You know, we were new parents. He was three months old. So that's strange. A um, couple days later, we're like, oh, maybe it'll go away. I don't know. A couple days later, it was still there. We thought, not right. So we contacted his pediatrician. We <laughs> went in and uh, we met with her and she said, at first it was on a Saturday, she said, oh, no big deal. It could be stool or a swollen lymph node, something, nothing crazy. Um, she called us first thing Monday morning and said, you need an ultrasound. She said, I didn't want to worry you over the weekend. There was nothing we could have done. Mm-hmm. Um, but she said, if it were my kids, I would want them to go to Boston Children's and you should get an ultrasound. So we did that. Um, and we were admitted right away. Um, we were, we had the ultrasound done in Waltham at the other location, and uh, they come in and ask us if we wanted to take an ambulance to the hospital. Ooh. So we're like, bad oh. sign, right? Yeah, yeah. They said, do you want to drive yourselves or do you want to take a ride? Um, we said we'll drive ourselves, and we were there for a week. Um, he had a power port put in two days later, and the next day he started chemo. It's called Wilms Tumors. Kind of. Maybe. Kind of. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's, um, that's what we call it. That's the easy mm-hmm. thing to call it. Um, we go with bilateral kidney tumors. Um, we're not sure exactly if it is a Wilms tumor. Okay. There's something else called nephroblastomatosis that it might be, um, but we're not sure. Um, as of right now, uh, it's his tumors in both kidneys are pretty much deemed inoperable um, because they're basically wrapped around the renal artery, mm-hmm. so they wouldn't be able to remove the tumors without removing both kidneys, and obviously that's not something that we want to do right now. Now, obviously, a year later, it is still an emotional discussion for you to have, but looking back to that day, Nate, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've gotten hit a couple of times where it's buckled your knees, but probably nothing buckled your knees like hearing that diagnosis. Oh, man, absolutely. Um, like she said, when we were driving to the hospital, I think we both cried the entire way, and yeah. then probably was a few weeks that we just cried all the time mm. um so it was really emotional it was really hard um but you know the crazy thing and the, the weird thing about it was i got injured the week before his diagnosis so as crazy as it was the injury was a blessing um i got to be with these guys and we got to go through it without the stress and worry of the season and all those sort of things so, plus you got to stop feeling sorry for yourself yeah there was something <laughs> else to worry about absolutely yeah, exactly. yeah. and i didn't care about my own health at right, that point right. at all on Thursday, and then he was diagnosed on Monday. Wow. So we're in the hospital, and Nate's got his arm for this like whole thing. Yeah. And he's still and he's, it was crazy. And he's gone through 21 uh, rounds of rounds of chemo today. 21 treatments. 21 treatments. I'm sorry. 21 so treatments. today today will be 22. 22. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I, I mean, I I'm, I've seen you know adults do it. I've seen you know like parents <laughs> or other people. How does it? He's, and he's he's your classic one year old. He's crazy, you know, yeah. in a great way. How does yeah. how does that how does that happen? How does that work? What's that? Pro- I mean, I can't. Yeah, I so we, we did uh, 10 weeks straight when he was yeah. first diagnosed. Every week he had chemo, yeah. 10 weeks straight, every Tuesday. And then since then it's been every three weeks. So he has chemo, we get two weeks off, come back and do it again. Um, but he does great. He handles it amazingly. I mean, for him it's almost like he doesn't know any different. He, you know, he's fine. He's, we, as long as we give him his nausea meds and stuff, right. he's pretty good yeah. to go. But he has chemo on Tuesday, and we kind of – joke kind of in the family that by the weekend he's like ready to roll ready to yeah. Go. yeah yeah and, and, and right. what you see like now is basically what you get i mean he's 
I mean, why not? <laughs> no, he's a happy kid, man. And, yeah, um, he looks so great. It's a real blessing, really. Yeah. He's going to be a star in, on Nesson because he's been playing. He's playing to the camera. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, they say when you when you have your health, you worry about a thousand things. When you don't, you worry about one thing. Yeah. And I, I'm guessing that's the case with you guys. How do you even focus on football, Nate? Um, you know, um, actually, football has been kind of a release from all the stress and everything for him. And, and uh, where football was the biggest stress in my life before, right. now it's like an escape. Um, it's fun. I get to I get to kind of take my mind off of things at home and things. Um, and so I've really appreciated and enjoyed it like never before. Have you had? Have either of you guys had anything like this in your lives before? Is it was it all new to you? Do you spend like all day and night on the internet trying to figure out what's going on? Um, I think it's definitely new. It was new. You know, I think everybody has for the most part. I mean, I'm speaking for everybody, but I think we all know somebody with cancer that's gone through treatments or something like that, um, whether it's a friend or a relative or anything. So um, we've had people in the family that have had cancer, and but, you know, we watch from afar and pray for them and that sort of thing, but it's never hit this close to home, I don't think. Um, well, and it, even in my case, it was uh, a pretty simple and easy, straightforward mm -hmm. process. I didn't even have chemo or anything like that. I had one surgery, and then it's basically like I didn't have cancer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So this this has been a lot. And like you said, you'd rather have it yourself than have sure. your, your child have it. So um, it's much much different process. I, I'm not sure this question is even answerable, but can you put any kind of uh, you know par uh, parentheses on how much, ugh, I hate to use the word easier, but more relieved or assured you are being able to go to a place like Dana Farber as opposed to living out in you know Alaska somewhere and you're going Colorado. to some clinic. Colorado, Colorado, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, and you know what? We don't believe in mistakes. Um, there was a reason I was drafted here. There's a reason we're here, and um, I signed that extension just in time to where we knew we'd be here for a few more years. And, and thank God because um, we know that this is one of the best places in the world sure. for him to be treated. Right. When we found out when he when Hudson was diagnosed, we think we asked Nate's agent to kind of do some research for us mm -hmm. and see uh, sec if there's any place we should go for a second opinion or anything. Um, he basically got back to us within a day or two and said, no. You're right down the street. Yeah, yeah. we're right so, where so we should be. Dumb question, but how does a one-year-old sit still for chemo? Well, that's what I was trying to ask. <laughs> I didn't ask it well. I don't, I, you should see him now, and he's yeah. your classic, healthy, you know, yeah. happy, crazy one-year-old. How yeah. does he sit still for hours? Yeah. Well, he started at three months, though, so it's been a little bit, it's been a growing process. This, yeah. <laughs> the guy we're looking at right here. <laughs> <a> fully, yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, right, when right. He was, when he was three months, he did a lot of sleeping and laying around, but now he's kind of getting up and running, so it's becoming more and more of a process. Yeah, yeah it's getting harder and harder to, to hold him back, but um, he's always handled it really well. We actually joke that he uh, doesn't really know not to hit other people or other kids, <laughs> but he knows how to sit still while he gets his port access. Right. Really? He it's knows like, how to hit. Where did he get that from? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. sure. Where did that come from? Yeah. Sure. So how are your teammates been in terms of uh, their support? I mean, you know, you look, you look at the, you know, in the locker room, tough guys and all that sort of yeah. stuff, but I, there's probably a human element here and a connectivity yeah. where they're looking at you and saying, there but for the grace of God go me and my family, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, um, you know, it was so uplifting the way that my teammates have supported us this whole time. Um, they were, they were um, putting meals together for us. Uh -huh. They were calling us on a weekly basis. They were reaching out to us. And uh, really, it went far beyond anything on the football field. Um, just the human element, like you said, and it's been so supportive and so moving to have guys like that. Was even Coach Belichick nice? Coach Belichick's <laughs> been amazing. He really has, he has been amazing. He's been he so supportive with anything that we need uh, with Hudson and, and him reaching out. He even sends me text messages of encouragement all the time. That's too, great. So. Really? Yeah. Did he bring food over? Like, big, big lasagna? Yeah. Pot, pot I don't know if he's what? much of a chef. Well, it makes a, <laughs> makes a great big ziti. Yeah. Yeah. This, whether it's Will's tumors or whatever, it's rare, right? Yeah. Do you worry that it's too rare, that not enough people care about it? Because sometimes you see these real rare, especially in young kids, and their parents are like, nobody knows what we're doing. They don't know anything about it. It's just not common enough yeah. yeah yeah we were told um when he was diagnosed that he there were about 20 to 30 other cases with the bilateral Wilms tumors um in the country in the country and then with him um it's usually seen in two to three year olds uh and then with him he was three months old so he was way on the young end um but yeah it's rare i mean i don't i don't think we've ever had the feeling that nobody cares um, I mean, with, at the hospital in the Jimmy Fine Clinic, it's we feel so taken care of and so cared about that really? that thought has honestly never crossed my mind. Um, you know, as we go along this whole process, I'm kind of learning about 
uh, how rare pediatric cancer is and how underfunded it is. Um, and that's been kind of eye-opening, but um, for us on a personal level, I've never felt like, you know, nobody cares about well, it. Why do you think it's underfunded? I think it's something that people don't want to think about, it's something they don't want to talk about. Um, it's something that, you know, nobody likes to sit home and say, oh, I'm going to give money to these little babies with right. cancer. I mean, that's just not something that, I mean, even before this was us, you know, it's not something we cared about or thought about well, all the time or, you know. What's the uh, happened to someone else. Right. 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 What's, uh, the, what's, the, what's the road map going forward here over the next few months, say? Okay, so he's got uh, three more treatments we know for sure, and then um, we're going to start this vitamin K, uh, vitamin A, vitamin A uh -huh. treatment, and um, so they're going to remove the port, but we don't know exactly what the next step is, so they kind of monitor it and make sure things mm -hmm. are kind of progressing the way they've been progressing. All right, joining us on the uh, AT&T hotline, a couple of uh, people that you are very, very close to and been very, very involved in what you're going through, the uh, the Solder family, Robert and Jonathan Kraft from the New England Patriots. Uh, Robert, Jonathan, welcome to, the, uh, welcome to the broadcast. Nice to be on with you, especially with special people like the Solders who are as classy as they come. They talk about the uh, great support from the New England Patriot family, uh, and, and, and that comes as no surprise. But it sort of is a family, and, and, and you gather the, the, the wagons when things like this happen, Robert. Yes, I mean, look, Nate went through his own situation, and then it was interesting hearing him chat about how <laughs> what all our fans tell, felt terrible about happened to him how it really turned into a blessing for the family. And, you know, our family has gone through the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, in a different way, but we know the social impact it has when cancer strikes. And it just impacts our family in ways that people haven't experienced it and um, can't understand really. And... Being able to be close and connected and feel you have the support is so critical at that time. I guess the biggest surprise was that uh, these guys said that Jonathan Kraft also has a heart. We were surprised that we didn't realize that. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, Jerry, I love you, man. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got, hey, Jerry, Jerry, let me tell you something. Nate and I did, an, cancer is something, as, as my father just said, that we're incredibly passionate about fighting. I mean, back in the 80s, he created the the platelet lab over right. at Dana-Farber, which I think is the largest collector of platelets in the country, if, if not the world, to help people fight it. But Nate and I did an American cancer event for Fortune you know, 100 CEOs before Hudson was diagnosed, and you should have heard how passionate and brilliant he was when he spoke, and that was to a small group of some of the largest uh, company CEOs in the country, and I think he made a huge difference. And then at an event we were both involved with last spring, the 100, uh, Nate just captured a room of 1,200 people speaking passionately about cancer. So it's something really? that he's being modest there, but even before Hudson was diagnosed, he understood the importance of using his platform in a positive way and, and, and going out and making a difference. And I don't think anyone's made a bigger difference in the Kraft family when you think about it. I see that sign, that name, that Kraft Platelet Center all the time and just say, that's a pretty cool legacy. Forget, you know, stadiums and teams and everything else and, and the paper companies to have a Kraft Center in the Dana-Farber. What, what floor is it? Oh, God. Man. What was the question? What floor is it? I don't even know what the just number to walk of the floor through it. is. Just yeah. to walk through it must be pretty awesome. We walk by you know what? I, I want to give you guys kudos for uh, doing what you do, EEI. And we're so lucky to have the Dana Faber in our community. And like Nate was saying, the quality of care that you give. But it, it also, you know, we all go back to our tradition and roots. And um, I also, you know, I was just thinking about uh, our good man John here. We go back 1985 the old Channel 7, and then just is about the same time I started 
getting involved with Dana Fiber, going on the board and seeing the great progress that they've made and what they've done there. And we've tried to be very supportive, but Jonathan and I chatted and, you know, we'd like to give $25,000 to the pediatric uh, cancer area in the soldiers uh, honor. Very, wow. very nice. That's great. Uh, Nate, you want to say anything to Boss 1 and 2 before we sign off here? Uh, you guys have been the best. Thank you so much from our family. It really has meant a lot, you guys. Yes. So you're not going to hold well, uh, At the break, he said he was going to hold out. He wants more money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy yeah. where I'm at. <laughs> Robert, Jonathan, thanks very much for taking time. We appreciate it. Uh, and thank you, uh, most importantly, for what you do for the Jimmy Fund and the Craft uh, Plato Center and all of the stuff that you do that most people and some people have no idea. It's, uh, many, much of it is behind the scenes. We appreciate it. Indeed. I know the soldiers appreciate it. And thanks for calling in this morning. Thanks, Dino. We love you. All right. Robert, Our Jonathan pleasure. Kraft thanks, on the guys. AT&T Outline. Thanks. Soldiers, thanks for getting up early and coming in and sharing your story. You've made the phone ri uh, lines ring off the hook. Oh, so that's a very perfect. good thing. That's the whole idea. And if I can ask you, just before we go, can you, can you, in your own words, explain what research money does and research does with ideas and cures and, and how it's helping your family in particular so we can make those phones completely ring off the hook? Absolutely. Um, the funding and the money is everything. I think it's been really interesting. We look around the... Um, the Jimmy Fund Clinic and stuff, and we've seen some old pictures of what it looked like 15 years ago, right. 20 years ago, and it is not what it is today. Um, so the money and everything has come a long way. The research, our doctors, we, I mean, we're just so proud to have the doctors and the treatment that we have. It's the most amazing treatment that we could, we feel that we could possibly get in the entire well, world. And, and we're looking at a guy right here, the research they're doing is ongoing right now. Right. And the funding and the support that you can give is changing lives right now. God bless the Solder family. Nate, Lexi, and one-year-old Hudson. Hope to see you next year. Thank you. Oh, that'd be yep. great. All Thank right. You. Uh, we'll Thank take, you, guys. We'll take a break. Uh